Welcome to Excel Tips. My name is Neil Blackwood and in this episode we're going to look at how we can automate hiding blank and zero rows in a report. We're using a report that I created in the April episode and this report uses dynamic arrays to populate the values. Dynamic arrays by their nature can change how far they spill. So spilling is a dynamic array feature and in this case the report could spill further down if there are new accounts added. And so we've left a few blank rows in each section so that the accounts can spill down if we do add some new accounts. Now the problem that causes is obviously this doesn't look the best when we want to present the report. Uh, also, there's an example here on row 27 of an account number which looks like it's not used anymore. Uh, and so there's no values for this year and there's no values for last year. So we've got some comparatives from last year on the right hand side. We probably don't need to show that row either because it's not adding anything to the report. They're all zeros. So we want to hide that row as well. I'll show you a technique that we can use to add a formatted table to the report and then use a slicer to hide the rows very easily. So let's have a look at the solution. So I'll start off by showing you the system in action, and then we'll go back and look at how it works. So we've inserted the columns on the left hand side. We can hide this section using grouping. Let's see how it works. So what I'm going to do is click this display option. And that's it. It's as simple as that. So the account 4600, which was the one that was zero, has disappeared, as well as the uh, blank rows that were there for the spilling. As you can see, they've all been um, hidden. Notice the blue row numbers on the left hand side. That means a filter is in place. So we are using a filter to do this. The slicer that is up here is a filter interface. Notice the OK here. What I've done is I've put a sort of an error capture. There is the possibility that if something changes in the data, the filter will need to be reapplied. As an example, let's say we go to our GL data here and I change this number here to that 4600, which was the number that we just hid. So if I go back to my report, well, if I, if I look at the original report, you'll see that that number has now has a, a value in it for 600. But when I come back to my report here, uh, a change in a value won't update the filter. You'll notice now that this little text box has a message here that the filter is required. So all I need to do is once I see that, click on the display option again. And there you can see now that the 4600 is there. So the system does need something to warn you that you need to reapply the filter uh, if something changes in the data. So let's go put that one back to the way it was. And again, we should get an error message here saying a filter is required because now this row should be hidden, but it's actually visible. So again, we just click on display and it hides it. OK, so let's have a look at how this works. So I'll unhide this. I'll clear the filter. There's a couple of ways to clear the filter. I could come up here and tick the hide. Uh, I'll show you a keyboard shortcut as well. So I'm going to press in sequence the Alt key, the A key and the C key. And what that does is it clears the filter. You need to be in the table that the filter is applied to. But Alt A C, they're pressed in sequence. Uh, they're fairly close to each other, so it's, it's a quick shortcut to use. And that clears the filter that was applied. OK, so let's see how the formulas in this formatted table on the left hand side. I have covered formatted tables in a previous article. So if you do a search for that on the In the Black website, you can uh, track that down. Formatted tables have a lot of advantages. One of them is that the formulas automatically copy down. So let's go through the formulas that are making this work. So the first formula is in column B, so it's is zero. So if there is a true in this column, it means that it's a zero row. Now, in this case, it's actually part of the heading. So over here, we're looking at columns J to Z. 
So J to Z are the value columns in the report. And what we're doing is we're checking that they it equals zero. Now we're using count if to do this. So we're counting how many times zero is in that range and comparing that to the count A result. So count A counts everything in a range. So if they are the same value, it basically means that it's a blank row or it has zeros in there. Now, if you select part of a formula, Excel does show you the value here. So we got a zero and another zero. So that's zero equals zero. And so it's showing a true. On the next row, we've actually got some headings there. So the count A is counting four, whereas the count if is counting zero. So there's no zeros in that range. So let's have a look at this uh, outside services here where this is actually showing true. So we can see here that We've got 14 zeros in that range, and that also equals 14 values. Do that again. So there's 14 values. So basically it means if you count the zeros and that equals the same as the count A, then it means you need to hide the row. And so it's gonna show true. If it says false, then it means you don't wanna hide the row. So what I've also added here is column D, which is the display column. Now what that is doing, it's allowing you to override the is zero calculation. As an example, this row here, row 17, is a blank row. It's empty. There's nothing in it. But I want to have that in my report. I want to have a blank row in my report to separate my revenue from my direct costs. So I don't want that hidden. So what I've done is I've added a, an input column that allows me to uh, enter, in this case, a D, if I want that to display. So this is going to override the is zero calculation. So in this case, this row, even though it's zero, I still want it to display. And so the D is going to override this true. So let's have a look at the formula that then ultimately we're going to use to filter, which is in column A. So this has either the word display or the word hide in it. We're using an if function with the and function as its logical test. So the and function looks at, at the moment, in this case it's, to, it's returning false. The and function looks at multiple what are called logical tests. So a logical test should return true or false. In this case, it's using what's called structured references, and that's the square bracket around the uh, column heading. So is zero is a column, and if I, if I can highlight these square brackets, there we go, and that's telling me it's displaying true. The at symbol means extract the same row from that column. And then we're going to also look at the display column and check if it equals blank. So the way to identify a blank easily is just to check if it equals two double quotation marks together. That's what those are. And so if that equals a blank, that's going to return true. And if this has true, which means it's zero. So if both of these are true, we are going to display the word hide. If either of them are false, or both of them are false, then we are going to display the word display. The AND function only returns true if all its logical tests return true. That allows us to use column D as an override to the is zero column. To be honest, you don't have to put a D, you can put anything in there because it's checking for a blank cell. So it'll, you'll get the same effect if you put an X there, for example. Uh, this will override it as well. But uh, I've just said the, the letter D to display that row. OK, we'll come back to column C, which is uh, just checking the filter. So we can use column A to generate our slicer. So what I'm going to do, I'll create another slicer. We've got the slicer here, but I'll create another one so you can see how you create them. So if you click on here, go to table design, you can click insert slicer. And we want to use hide. Uh, now that's a default slicer, which 
in some cases is okay, but what we want to do is we want to display it uh, across the page. And so what you can do is you can right click on it and go to size and properties. And what we want is the position and layout over here. And I'm going to increase the columns to two, which puts them side by side, which is really good. That's what I want. I'm going to click this multi select icon. This allows you to click buttons one after the other, which is what we want for our solution. And then I'm going to right click and go to slicer settings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to untick the display header option. And so what that does, that just gives me this layout, which is easier to fit up here, for example. So that's how you create the slicer. And if you, I think if I apply one, it's going to work on both. I don't really need this one now. I'll just, I'll delete that. So that's how I created the slicer. And so all you need to do is click on display and that will hide all of the rows. And again, I can use this grouping over here to get uh, rid of the helper cells on the left hand side. And there we go. Now, as I mentioned, we had that problem where if the values update uh, and you don't click display, then there could be the situation. So let's let's trigger that now. Let's go back and change this to 4600, which was our missing blank number. And so again, we can see now that the filter required message is displayed. So let's go and go here. And I'm going to clear my filters by pressing Alt AC to clear the filters. And as you can see, the message is telling me that a filter is required. And that's because I've cleared all of the filters. So at the moment, all of the rows we want to hide are still visible. OK, so let's see how this works. So what we're going to use is the subtotal function. The subtotal function has a superpower. It has the ability to perform calculations on only visible cells and that works when it's in a filtered table. So we can use the subtotal function to confirm that a row that should be hidden is hidden and a row that should be displayed is displayed. The subtotal function can perform a number of different calculations. In this case, the number at the front three is defining the count a function. So it's going to count the entries that are visible in the filtered table. Now, what we can do is we can count the same row that we're on. OK, so I'm counting if there's an entry in the hide column. If that is hidden, it's going to count zero. Now, what we can do then is check if hide equals display, I can display a one which means it should be visible. The count should come up with a one if display is in column A. If it doesn't, then I'm going to have a zero there. So by comparing the result of the subtotal with the result of this if, we can show true if the filter is correct at the moment. So here you can see these are all false because we should have filtered these rows out. And so this is showing false. All of the trues are basically when there's a display in this column here. OK, so this column is displaying true if the filter is correct and false if the filter is wrong. And, and in this case, this needs to be filtered. The hide should be hidden. And so that's why that says false. Now, what we can do is we can count how many falses Again, using count if, we can count how many falses are in that column. Uh, by the way, this is called a structured reference. It's also using the square brackets, but it has the prefix of the table name. Uh, now, I do use a prefix on my table names, so I use a TBL prefix. So TBL display is the name of this table. So what this is doing, it's looking in that whole column and counting how many falses there are. At the moment, there are 13. And so this formula here says if um, C1 is 0, then OK. So that means the filters have been done. Otherwise, display the word filter required. And that is linked to this particular text box. So when I click on the text box, you can see it says equals F1. That's how you get the 
message to pop up inside this text box. So let's have a look. So if I click display, you'll see that the errors are now zero because all of these are saying true. Okay, so that is zero errors. Now, let's go back and change our data to 4100, which is what it should be. And so when I come back to my report here, we'll see we do have a false. Okay, because now this has gone back to all zeros. It doesn't need to display. And so this column, the filter OK column, is showing a false, which gives us one error, which means filter is required. If we click display, then that fixes it and it's all good. And then again, we can hide using the grouping on the side. So that's a technique that uses a formatted table with a slicer as well as a little error checker to make sure that the filter has been applied correctly. So that's shown you how you can use quite a number of different features, functions within Excel to work together to create a solution to a problem that we now have because of dynamic arrays uh, and the fact that we need to insert a few blank rows in sections. So we still want to be able to print the reports out and have them display correctly. So using the formatted table is a quick and easy way to handle the display of your report. I uh, hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching.